Thank you, Kerry. Oh, I'm very excited to be here um, to announce and also share with you about INCOR effort we've done. And also, I know that this is the last presentation for today, so it's very, I know you are very tired. So I tried to skip a little bit boring part and try to do live demo today. So I need, you wish me luck, because live demo is always tricky. Uh, first of all, I think that um, this is very important. Uh, the Center of Excellence for Risk-Based Community Resilience Planning. I think that you remember Judy's presentation today during the lunchtime uh, mentioned about Center of Excellence. Uh, so NIST funded this uh, center, and then NCSA and these universities are part of uh, this center we uh, research together. Our role in the center is basically uh, um, acquire and learn the algorithms and data and implement on the platform, which is called INCOR. And as you know, the center of excellence in this case are headquartered at the Colorado State University right now. So what is INCOR? Uh, it is a measurement science in implemented on the platform. Uh, basically, we try to not just the papers or publications to understand what the algorithm is, but provide executable and implementation of those algorithm along with the data. So that this is a platform that people are able to do, users are able to do risk-based approach to decision making, enable the quantitative comparison of alternative resilience strategies also among the different communities. So these are the parts that uh, INCOR could cover. Some individual hazard, and or the multi and competing hazard and long-term resilience assessment. And these are the, some built-in infrastructures. And also we cover uh, the social systems, economic systems, and also optimization strategy of uh, an in-core platform. I think this is a very important aspect of in-core platform because uh, we start to find out that the example and how to use in-core is very important. So these are the test bed uh, executed within the center. And then right now, we released the second Seaside Oregon testbed and Joplin, Missouri testbed is released with this release, uh, in core release. So I can show you in the live demo, hopefully today. So in core version 1.0. So it's released uh, December 20th, 2019, right before Christmas. So we are very uh, work hard and happy to announce this. And every source code is available in the GitHub and also under Mozilla Public License version 2. Uh, so if you have any question regarding the license, please uh, let me know. But this open source license is a popular uh, among some of the different flavor of the license here. So we, I can explain later if you have a question why we choose this. And also, uh, Michael actually gave you really a good presentation about Python. So we are using the Conda as a platform to deploy the Python package. So we call the Conda package. So you can also navigate to find out. And also Incor has a landing page that gives you some of the new version announcement and things like that. I'm going to navigate those websites when I do the live demo. So architecture is uh, Incor. We built on top of cloud computing system, which is consists of the Docker and Kubernetes. There are some components uh, within the Incor. First one is a Py Incor. So it's a Python library or a Python module for the Incor. And then we also build the Incor web services. So when we discuss with the researchers and users about uh, some of the use of the computational research, we find out there's some aspect need to be shared among the researchers. For example, you have a set of fragilities and you want to share among the researchers. And you have some uh, scenario hazard you want to share among the researchers. And also, you have a data set you want to share among the researchers. So we've, we decide that we're going to put those shareable resources to the web service. So PyInCore communicate with the web, web services to conducting the computation. And also, we find out web services sometimes is very um, technical for the researchers to use. So we built some web tools to navigate and browse those web services and some database and behind. And then Inqual Lab is one other uh, tool that we built on NCSA, or you can also run it on your local, bring you some integrated environment to use a Python, uh, PyInCore using all the services I just explained. I'm going to get into a little bit detail in the later of the presentation. Um, I think that 
you are learning today, very cutting edge technologies today, especially this session. Uh, one thing uh, very uh, getting the hot topic among the co scientific community right now is the containers. Uh, I think the, the Michael mentioned a little bit about that. So quickly, the container technology, the Docker is one implementation, is basically the idea that is a one container contains all the, the pieces you need to run your software, including actually the operating system. So right now, if you can search on Docker Hub, you can find a lot of those Docker images available public. You can actually run it, those Docker images, without installing many other things, as long as you have a Docker software installed on your machine. That allow us to deploy and a lot of different things on some of the cloud computing resources. Actually, the second bullet, the Kubernetes, is the one of the software technology allow us to orchestrate those uh, container uh, technology. And then I know it's sometimes very difficult. I mean, to explain this unless you actually hands on and use it. But uh, I think the important part is why the scientists interested in this. Uh, because the technology brings us automatic scaling. Because now a lot of computation need resources. Issue is, previously, as you have to have a designated resources, how many CPU, how many RAMs, things like that. But now it allows you to do auto scaling depending on your needs. Second thing is, you deploy your technology on certain platform, like Windows or Linux or some different machines. The container technology brings a portability. So right now, uh, we're going to release uh, source code, but we're going to release, I think, second half of uh, this year or so Docker images of InCore, which means you can deploy InCore anywhere you want. And the lastly is also for software developers also. When we start developing the software, it's sometimes very hard to testing because all the environmental changes, but it allow the Docker technology allow us to have a very consistent and uniform testing platforms. We don't need to worry about different many other aspects. So this is uh, now also uh, very popular among astronomy uh, community right now. Because as you know, astronomy has a long history of a computation. They have like a Fortran code, C++ code, Python code. Now they are using the Docker to deploy and share their code regardless of the, their software languages right now. So Inquiry using this technology. So first, uh, it's a Pi in core. So just uh, look at this gray part. So if you have Conda install, it's a mini Conda or Anaconda on your machine, you can type this command line, you will have a Pi in core right away. So you can use a Pi in core package on your Python program as a module. If you have a OpenSea's Pi, which already you have the Python, right? So you can use those things together. Also, we do have some of the documentation available. So later, I'm going to show you some example of how the PyInCore can be used. Uh, PyInCore has uh, two major components, uh, three major components. One is that uh, it interacts with the InCore web services. So sometimes a web service is hard to communicate because there's a lot of uh, requirement you need to do. So we provide you a Python method. You can connect to the web service and also interact and search and download the data set, things like that. And secondly, we also provide some base classes or base uh, code how you interact with analysis and data set. And also most important part is analysis. So we work with uh, the researchers within the center of excellence that acquired their codes, and we turn that into the Pine Core analysis right now. So you are able to see actual code and algorithm in the GitHub, and also you can run it and use it within your code also. So these are the list of the currently available analysis. It's actually keep growing. Uh, as you know that our center of excellence ending the fifth year next February, uh, this actually end of this month, and then we are in the review of the renewal. And then there's a lot of research is already done and algorithm already sent to us. So we are already clean up those on them and publishing. So this half of this year, I think you will see more available analysis coming up and also new uh, testbed examples coming up. And these are the resources about GitHub and all the general documentation and things like that. Hopefully, I'm able to share this slide with a uh, carry or peer so you can use this link to navigate and acquire the information. 
So our second component is web service. So there's a lot of words, but I can say this way. One is when you're thinking about the sharing the data, sharing some of fragility curve among the researchers, important thing is that you need to know who you are to use and who you are to share with. So we need to authenticate. We need to have user accounts. So we do have an authentication service. And then we have a data service, which has a storing and managing data set, including one of the popular is a building inventory data or bridge inventory data. Uh, we do have those are some of the example data from the test bed available in the data service. And then hazard service, we're so able to store in the hazard definitions. You can also create some of the scenario hazard. It's an earthquake, tsunami, tornado, and hurricane wind field right now available. So you could uh, go into the next topic, go into a web tools, you are able to navigate those information through the, some user interface and find out what kind of things are available. And another thing is very interesting named DFR3 service. The reason you, you used to call it fragility service, but through the research, as you know, there's uh, other um, curves or functions for damage, repair, recovery, and restoration. So DFR3 stands for damage, functionality, uh, repair, recovery, and also restoration service. So this is a database and web service store all those curves available we come, uh, came out from the research. Another important aspect of the service is matching inventory to certain curve. So we find out is we have a lot of different kind of fragility curve, for example, and then you do have inventory, for example, the building, and depending on building the structure characteristic, you may be able to match it to certain fragility sets. So we do uh, have that matching uh, examples in the DFR3 service, so you're able to match your inventory to the certain fragility curve if you want to. And we do have a geospatial visualization service. And then semantic service is the one, the definition of the data set. So in other words, the data dictionary. But it's a little bit more than that, or it does a validation. Currently, it is not open to the public yet. It's coming on the next release. And the last one is a space service, which is controlled access. So right now, you, you are able to get the free account. You can sign up. I'm going to share the link later on. Then you are able to access to all the publicly available data. But we also have the different space for researchers. They can uh, have a controlled access to their own data set. So uh, these are some of the information about how you can have access to these services and documentation example screenshot here. Also GitHub link and also technical documentation link. And this is a web tool. So web tools are a very lightweight web application. You are able to browse data, fragility curve, and hazard right now. And obviously, right now, we are expanding the fragility browser into the DFR3 services. So you are able to navigate the repair curves and restoration and other curves also. Our last component is uh, Inqua Lab, which is some of you heard about Jupyter Notebook today. But there is a next version uh, Jupyter Community come up with is a Jupyter Lab. It's a much better user interface, and you could handle different kind of resources uh, within the Jupyter environment. And then what we've done is we customized the Jupyter Lab to connect to some of the services we already have and documentations we have already. So you are right now able to run the Inqua Lab version locally or you can actually access to NCSA to use the online version, which are available through the Jupyter Hub. So, bravely, I'm going to try live demo. Wish me luck. So, uh, this is the website. Let me. This is a very uh, technical site. If you're ever interested in the, uh, um, some of the scientific aspect, you can go to resilience.colorado.edu, which is a center website. You are able to access to uh, various scientific researches there. But this site is more focused on InCore software. So you will see InCore version 1 there. However, we do have a different component, have different versions. So we have, we're actively developing this component, so we start to start to increase some of the version numbers there. If you click on, for example, 
GitHub, you can go to the GitHub repository to have all the source code here. And also, you just go to GitHub slash in core, it has all the uh, source code available right now. So in here, I can show you one example. So good thing about the GitHub is actually show the Jupyter notebook on the fly. So this is the example of how you do building damage analysis using Pi in core. So you can see here, this is a Jupyter notebook. So you are able to see that not just the source code here, but also you can do some documentation in the Jupyter notebook. So uh, quickly, uh, you're going to import the Pi in core, and then you just create a connect, this client actually connect to the in core service. And then you start to mentioning about what kind of hazard you want to use, what kind of data set you want to use, and things like that. And you instantiate building damage analysis this way. And you start to set the parameter about what the wizard name you want to have, what is some of the hazard you want to use, number of CPU you want to use, and, and then run it, it runs. And then afterwards, interesting thing happened here is, now you are able to start to use other Python library. In this case, we are using a pandas library. So pandas library allow you to navigate tables and chartings and things like that. So you can see some of the wizards on the fly. And then you are able to also using MATLAB plot, the micro mention, you can create a chart right away. So in your site, now after you create the account, you are able to log in. Hopefully it works. <laughs> See? <laughs> Keyboard. Hey. Never. So uh, this is one of the browser called Fragility Browser. So you can see here, let's say, now you select the hazard type to tornado. It shows the all the Fragility curve available for the tornado. If you click on it, you are able to see some metadata about this uh, Fragility curve set. You click on the preview, it actually plot your uh, Fragility curve. You can see that. Interesting thing is you can see copy ID. Because each Fragility curve has a unique ID like that. So if you want to use this Fragility curve on your Python code or Python core, just click the copy ID. Then you copy the ID on your clipboard. So in your programming, you can paste the ID. You can use it on your program. So let's go into the data. So data browsers really look similar. You can also, let's say, search on C site. So we have a C site Oregon testbed. Hopefully this work. So you can see there's a variety of the seaside uh, data sets here. Let's change into building. So if you click on this, one of the data sets, and then you can also preview, hopefully, no. See? It used to work when I tested. <laughs> Let me try one more. Here we go. Hopefully coming up. So it, it actually should show that some of the dots here for the building data set, we are building in inventory data you can use. So now you actually check it. You can copy the ID you can use in the code. So my time's almost up. So I want to, want to show you the last part of documentation. This is the most important part because it actually has a variety of example. Let's go into Pine Core. It shows how to install Pine Core and mostly importantly go to analysis. If you click on this building damage, for example, it shows that what kind of input parameter you need to have, what is going to be your output, and also it has the code snippet you can use it. So can you start to copy and paste this code? You can actually start to developing. And if you click on actually link, this one pointing to the, the GitHub, the notebook that you can also look at some of the wizard too. So it has a very intensive, uh, extensive documentation available. We are actually keep updating this with the scientific information in there too. Thank you. <laughs>